please be okay. Okay. Please be okay. Doctor. Doctor. What's the diagnosis? T tell me you can save him. Well, I'm afraid he's going to be out for three to four months with this shoulder injury. Should, can you do more? Fix him sooner? Like, I need him back. He's one of my three strikers. We'll do what we can, send your space. But I've got another patient to see. Who can be more important than Foster? Who can be more than... You tell me who is more important than him, Doc. Well, Mr. Kibuya has also been brought in today. Wait. I must go. When did Kibuya get injured? Oh, no. Hello folks and welcome back to episode number three of Park 2 Primera here with Racing Santander and I don't know if I'm managing a football club or a hospital at the moment. Things have been mad since you were last here. There's just injuries galore and the two men I was so excited about having at the club in Foster who as we've already seen easily dislocated his shoulder but also Gabuya um They've both got injured. So at the end of last episode, I think I was talking about how great they were and how happy I was. But I feel like in Kabuya, we've got a man with a fantastic name. And in Foster, we've got hopefully a striker who's going to be very good for this level. And, uh, well, it, it's funny how these things work out. It's like football managers listening, to be honest. So they've been out with injuries. But despite that, we've had a pretty good first month in charge here at the club. So in terms of the fixtures, it has been a packed schedule, but a schedule that for the most part, we look pretty blooming impressive in. You can see, of course, after the win against Laredo last time out, we got a couple of wins to end the month of October. And going into a new month, we got a couple of wins, uh, one of which was against Real Union. Now, this team are considered one of our big promotional rivals. So this was a really, really good result. The first goal by Lopez. I'll tell you what, that finish from the left back put us on our merry way. And within, well, half an hour of the first half, we were three goals to the good. You can see here this kind of controlling style of play we're looking to play worked out great. Capani stepping up and filling the boots of Foster in the striking position. And uh, to be honest, just stretching the pitch wide, looking for the overlaps, creating a lot of chances. And also, we saw Pablo Torre get his first goal for the club. So that was really, really nice to see. We dominated this game. And this is kind of a familiar pattern at this point. We're having so much of the ball, controlling the ball well. We've got players like Torre, who are just so good with the ball at his feet, of course. He got his first goal of the season in this game here. Um, but yeah, despite the injuries we've had... It's been a really good team performance, I suppose, to start the season. Now, unfortunately for us, the latter two games that we've had have not gone quite so smoothly. Two draws. So whilst we are still unbeaten and today's opposition in Bilbao's B team are still unbeaten, um, I'm not 100% happy. I mean, shall we talk about this match? It finished nil-nil. We had an XG of 3.48. You know, sometimes you have one of those games. Cejudo in this game also missed a penalty in the 84th minute. You know, we've been knocking on the door all game and I was thinking maybe this is the time for the breakthrough. Our big Trek Quartista on the wing, the experienced head, he's going to step up, he's going to score. He didn't even hit the target. Disaster. And well, if that last game was disappointing, I think this one was even more disappointing. A draw here against Porto Galate. Um, we drew 1-1. They had two shots all game. Yeah, two of these kind of games in quick succession left me with a short fuse as I was playing Football Manager last night. In terms of the goal scorer for us, it was Capani with another one. Yes, we only have two fit strikers at the moment. They were both starting in this game. They both linked up here. A lovely little finish into the bottom corner by Capani. Unfortunately, you know, five minutes left of the game, pressing for a second goal. This happens. I love Football Manager. So where does that leave us in the league table, you may ask? Well, despite those two draws, in our first seven games, we've won five of them. We are unbeaten with just two goals conceded. And we are sitting pretty and in the top three, which is where we need to be come the kind of end of February. As I mentioned, today's game against Bilbao Athletic is going to be a really big one. They've not lost yet. We've not lost yet. This is the immovable force meets the unstoppable object today. So one thing that I found a little bit amusing here is that in our first season, we've sold 12,000 season tickets, which I thought was amazing until I realized that, you know, at home every game, we're having just over 12,000 fans turn up. So I was thinking, you know, season ticket sales come in, you know, you get that big chunk of cash at the start of the year, and then people would flock to watch us play our attractive brand of football. 
and we'd get more people coming in. What's actually happened is only the season ticket holders turn up. And as a result, we're just not making any money from ticket revenue game to game when we play at home. And unfortunately for us, it doesn't reflect too kindly on the bank balance where we're a little bit in debt, but perhaps more concerningly, we might be in the process of a board takeover. I mean, this could end up being the shortest series ever if I end up getting sacked off the back of this. Um, but yeah, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the man who's brought me in, he's been here a few months. He's seen me here. He's seen us do well. He's trying to sell the football club while it's hot. Don't know how I feel about that. Now, since you were last here, I've made one further addition to the squad. We signed a free player... And I signed him because he looked interesting, not only because he's just a quite well-rounded youngster at 18, but also because he's never played for a football team before. So if anyone wants to tell me who Lolo is, I would love to know, how does this person exist in Football Manager with no history? Are they a made-up player? Are they a real player who's never played for a senior team? Are they, maybe they're just mates with the Brazilian researcher for Football Manager. Either way... They look pretty good defensively, super well-rounded player, bit of potential. We'll see how they develop, I suppose. And well, when it comes to the first team, things are looking pretty good on the whole. We've had a nice little start. We've been rotating the squad quite a lot. That's been needed with the, you know, the number of fixtures. Unfortunately, with Gabuya, Foster and also Lopez, our left back, now out injured, we're running a little low on subs. And to make things even better, Lars... He's decided that Luxembourg's international duty is more important than playing for us. So thank you, Lars. Great to have a key player like you. Not sure why you're the highest earning player at the team when you just want you just want to bugger off on holidays while we struggle, you know, in a title race. But besides those traitors to the team, we've had some good performances. Capani, as I mentioned, has really stepped up. Foster dislocated his shoulder after the last episode. I don't think he played another game for us. So there was a lot of pressure on this man's shoulder to become a finisher for us. And to be fair, he's done the business. Four goals in four games, 7.29 average rating is really good. Already maybe looking towards the possibilities of extending his loan from Milan through beyond the end of this season. Elsewhere in the team, you can see here, Ricky's picked up a few goals. He's been on loan from Real Oviedo, getting, you know, a few bangers from range, shall we say. And well, when it comes to the midfield trio of attackers, we've got Cedric, we've got Sehudo, we've also got, as you can see here, Torre, who have all done pretty well so far. I mean, when it comes to average rating, there is a sea of green, and perhaps most notably, actually, our two centre-backs are doing the business. Matic. I mean, for a second, I thought he was the other Matic. I thought we'd picked him up from United. He's been that good for us. He's looked superb. And also Oscar Heel, who, of course, was man of the match in our first game in charge. That was not kind of a one-off occurrence. He's currently got a 7.68 average rating. He picked up another player of the match. I'm a big fan of Oscar. He is looking really blooming good for us. Now, I realised last episode, we didn't really talk about the actual tactic beyond the formation. So let's talk a little bit about our approach with this 4-2-3-1. Basically, we're looking to control games. We're looking to bully teams. We're looking to have more of the ball through more technical and more skilled players. When I looked at the team, we had so many players who were just really, really good with the ball at their feet. Great going forward. That's something I really wanted to lean into with how we play. And well, thus far, it's worked for us. You can see here in terms of instructions, we're playing wide, but we are looking to funnel things through the middle through our kind of creative core to the team. We've got low crosses on just because we've not got a huge target man. Foster's not bad in the air, but against, you know, towering defenders, he's not going to win a great deal when indeed he is fit. Looking to move the ball around quickly, looking to tire out opposition teams, just hog the ball, force them to try and press. And uh, if they don't press, they invite us onto them, afford us time, we can then find the killer passes through. In terms of transition, playing it out from the back. I'm trying to play a pretty brand of football. Whilst I don't know if it's a, a long-term thing that we're going to be able to sustain as we climb up through the leagues and we come up against better opposition, for this first year, it definitely feels like the right approach. And well, if we look at the team at detailed stats, I think it shows you that it's clearly working. 61% of possession is our average amount of possession. Interestingly enough, Bilbao, who we take on today, they're a very possession-orientated team. They are unbeaten, they look very, very good, and they also have the best home form at the moment. Are we home or away today? We're away. Yeah, th this is this is our first proper test, which I'm really looking forward to. So, of course, with this being Bill Bow's team, they have some super talented players in their ranks, like this guy, Nola Skoane. 
probably not how you say it. Uh, he looks really, really good as a defensive midfield option, or even maybe even as a centre-back. They've got talent, they've got money. This is going to be an interesting little test for us, which I'm quite keen to get into. So you know what? No more dilly-dallying. This is serious business time. They are unbeaten, we are unbeaten. There's a pretty high degree chance that leaving this game, one of those two statements isn't going to be true anymore. Now, in terms of team selection, just a little bit of rotation needed. Kapani coming into the team, obviously, to be expected. In the midfield, uh, we've got this guy, Inigo, who's come into the team um, with the absence of Gabuya. He is probably our next best ball-winning midfielder. Now, last episode, I talked about Gabuya joining us as a kind of player who could play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. I saw people a bit confused as to why I was playing him as a ball-winning midfielder on defend. Basically, in a two-man midfield where I don't have a defensive midfielder, I I like to have two players who are pretty good going forward and backwards and with players like Inigo whilst he's very good defensively going forward there's question marks about him additionally Nana is another one of our centre mid options you can kind of see the pattern here these are good players at winning the ball going forward they're not quite so proficient so whilst Gibua you know he is a defensive mid for us within the system he needs to have that capability to go forward I'm hoping we're not going to be missing that too much today but particularly with how we play it's fairly important that players are comfortable on the ball and carrying it up the pitch. Elsewhere in the team, Andrade is coming in at left back. He's playing quite a lot at the moment because Lopez, our first choice left back, is just constantly injured. And at right back, due to the international duty, Celebos gets a game for us, or Ceballos, as I think it's meant to be said. He's going to play for us at right back. He's looked pretty good so far. I feel like we've got good squad depth, a squad that should be good enough to play at this level and be fairly comfortable. And uh, I'm cautiously optimistic going into this one right lads i've got faith in you all you're you're all brilliant i love you all let's get the win let's play our brand of football let's try and wrestle the ball off them in a weird way i would quite like it if bilbao here kept hold of the ball really well if they forced us to maybe adapt our game slightly because as we progress through this season we're going to come up against tougher opposition that's going to be something we need also what we need is early goals I think we had an early one last time we were here for a live episode. Pablo's just got an assist. Was this his assist, though? Was it? I mean, their centre-back should be given the assist. It's Ricky with the finish. It's his third of the year from centre-mid. That loan from Real Oviedo may need to be extended. Although, let's not count our chickens yet. Three minutes in, they could very easily score here as Vincente bends it. Oh, my word. That was a really good free kick. Uh, I can't really blame Crespo for that one, can I? That's gone right into the top bins. I guess having got a hand on it, the goalkeeper might feel a tad disappointed, but that, I mean, it's, it's hard to be mad about that, isn't it? It's, it's, how good is Vincente at free kicks? I want to check. We'll check it after this, right? Building out from the back. Let them press high, and then let's see what we can do. I mean, that's, that's not the ball we needed, although they're giving it back to us. Some of this passing would not be that that you'd expect, I suppose, of two of the best teams at controlling the ball in the league. Although, well, Pablo here at left back, what can he do? He gets it in Capani, heads over. He scored a fair few of those headers. He really nearly had another for his collection there. Right, Vincente, how good are you at free kicks? 11 free kick taken, 14 technique. I love football manager. I love it when a player with bad long shot scores a long shot against you. Is there anything more annoying than that? Probably not. Anyway, our ball winning midfielder is on a booking after 15 minutes. That does not bode particularly well, nor does this. They're passing it out from the back. And that goal was filthy. C can we discuss that passing? My players can't do that. Sunset to Cortazar, back to Sunset. And then he just lays it off and Otola is there. Slots into the bottom corner. 2-1 Bilbao. Right, another throw in. There's highlight after highlight after highlight right now, and I don't know if I like this. I'll toller with the ball for them. Anigo has just gone in for a sliding tackle. I am very nervous about that man doing any more tackling. Oh my word. Crespo, good stop. Point blank range. Um, should I sub him off? I, do, I mean, I could just bring in Nana. You know what? Nana. Nana, Nana, Nana. Stop eating your half-time banana. You're getting on the pitch after 20 minutes. I'm not risking a sending off here. And whilst, you know what? I could tell him just to ease off tackles. Would he be a ball-winning midfielder anymore if I told him to ease off tackles? Probably not. And additionally, um, 
you know, with him being one of our fringe players, I don't really know how much I can trust him yet. And this is not the kind of game where I want to test how much I can trust a player not to get sent off. This is not the time for that. I've just noticed the palm trees in the background in the corner here. They're not great looking palm trees, Sports Interactive. I'm going to give that palm tree a solid three out of ten. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell the players <laughs> that they need to step it up. Like, I should focus on the match, not on the palm trees, but we need new next-gen palm tree technology football manager. Second half getting underway. We've actually had more of the ball, but naturally, it's not led to success so far. A couple of early goals for them, and we found ourselves behind. And from there, there's not really been a whole lot of chances just yet. Although, maybe Andrade out at left-back here is going to make something happen. He gives it inside to Cedric. Now with Nana... To Ricky. He has one goal to his name. Lays it off to Ceballos, the right back who, oh my word, Ricky. Ricky, what are you doing? What are you doing, Ricky? That's his fourth of the season from centre mid. He's already scored, I think, one banger. I don't know if the keeper could have done better there. Ceballos had an initial effort and it was blocked and it was like Ricky was inspired. He's thinking if the right back can have a shot from there, I'm going to have an effort. Wham, bang, thank you, ma'am. Ricky pulling a tricky out of his hat. He's a blooming magician. Right, can we get another Ricky? I want the hat trick. Okay, heel with the ball at the back. Build from the back. Patient. Sexy. That's not sexy. Keep it on the deck. Nana. He's looked good since he's come on, Nana. We've seen him do two things, but he's, looked, he's done those well. Oh, my word. Capani had a chance. He's hit it over. I mean, at the hour mark, this is, this is a proper game of football. I feel like we've had a few games against lesser opposition where we've been cruising through. The further that we get into the season as we reach hopefully the latter stages, things are going to get more competitive and they could be about to get even more competitive, but in our favour here because our toller, you've just been a very naughty boy. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Referee shows him a second yellow card. He is off. And with, well, 15 minutes left? I, uh, no, 25 minutes left. Football matches are 90 minutes long, Jack, not 80. Uh, I'm going to go on the offensive. And you know what? I'm going to bring in Alvaro Bustos, I think. I like Bustos, even if he is injury prone. He's only played a handful of games for us, but he's looked really solid. So I think we'll bring him in for Cedric, who's looking very, very tired. Um, elsewhere, Pablo. I mean, Pablo has eight stamina. And every game, he has like a red heart. And it makes me very nervous, but I feel like I just have to keep him on. Got to give him the game time. Now, unfortunately for us, Cedric and Capani are our only natural strikers in the team right now with Foster's injury. They both start. So in a game like this where Luan has not had a very good game, I don't really have a plan B. You know what? We'll bring in Bustos. He, he's going to work the magic here. We're going to go on attacking. 20 minutes left. They're down a man. They're playing without a right attacking mid. So you know what, Pablo? You, you're, you're unleashed, Pablo. I'm unleashing you. Just... Do, do, do whatever you want on the left-hand side. Look for the overlap. Let's focus the play down the left. Let's try and hit that kind of fullback and cause them issues. Nunes, mate, you do not know what is coming in your direction here. Cejudo with a chance. Back post. That's a foul on Capani. It's disgraceful. Give him a booking. Who is over it? It's Ricky for the hat trick. He's got his bloody hat trick from centre mid. Ricky sends the fans into raptures. It's 3-2 here. And you know what? Now that, now that we're a goal up, we'll just you know, go back to positive. Go back to controlling the game. None of that attacking rubbish. And uh, we'll just start to time waste a little bit and just slow the game down just a tad. Sahudo with another set piece. I mean, he's gone short and he's, he's gone straight to their man. They've not left anyone forward, so we're okay. Ricky, shoot! Don't actually shoot from there. Pablo, Ceballos, options in the middle. I'd love a fourth. I'd love a cushion. Pablo, Ricky. Oh my word, he's hit the boat. He could have had four. He could have had four. <laughs> oh my. I mean, I've not brought Ricky in at centre mid to get the goals, but if he wants to do this every game, I would not complain. And you know what? Time is running out. They're changing stuff up. I don't think it's going to matter. And after a couple of games of ballsing things up in the last minute, I think I can breathe a sigh of relief. I think we're okay. Nana, say who does there? Nana on off the bench for the assist. I'm a tactical genius. 4-4, four, four, uh, four, four, no, 4-2 four, here against Bilbao. We fought back and with four minutes of added time, this game is all said and done. We are singing in the rain. I was promised sun when I came to Spain. I feel betrayed. 
I have also been told that Santander isn't actually any more sunny than England. So d- disappointing revelation, really. Um, in terms of performance, Ricky, 9.1. Not often you see a centre mid have that kind of performance and get a hat trick. I know one of them was a penalty at the end, but he, he could have had four if he'd scored that long range effort. What I will say now is that goal does us a load of good. We sit top of the league, a little bit clear, a game in hand as well. Of course, we play 20 games in this first phase of the season. And then we come back for kind of the promotion league bit where we have lots of tricky games against the other good teams, not only in our group, but in the group next to us. But no, right now, looks pretty good for us, doesn't it? Anyway, in terms of when we're going to be back next time, we've got a game against the Real Union uh, on the 23rd of January. I've got that one cautiously earmarked as the game we may come back for. They're currently in second. January should be an interesting time because of the transfer window opening. I might look to try and get some loans in from Barcelona. Additionally, for all, all I know, we could be under new ownership by then. So there's there's a fair bit that could change between now and, well, in two months' time when it gets around to January. I am... A little bit relieved, to be honest, that the fixture schedule is easing up because we're running out of men rather quickly and we already don't have a particularly big squad. Anywho, that is going to do things from me today. Thank you for watching. If you've got to the end of the video, make sure to drop a like on it. Let me know what you made of Ricky's performance. What do you think of the tactic system? Have you noticed anything that I've missed that I should be changing up? I'll be interested to know all your thoughts down in the comments. And well, until next time, until tomorrow, it is me, Jack. Please no more players get injured. I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm out.